Welcome to Kick Physics. In this documentary series, you will learn about science and its relationship to Taekwondo kicks. We have drafted three of Europe's best Taekwondo athletes and masters solely to teach you how to perform and calculate the best kick possible. So, let's get started. First of all, when it comes to kicking technique, power is generated by the way your body moves. The Taekwondo kick is based on circular motion. To calculate your kick, you need to understand how to use circular motion and its relationship to power generation. So, the first part of our calculator will explain and calculate the fundamental forces that power the Taekwondo kick during circular motion. Force number three is gravity. Gravity is the force that pulls objects towards the ground, and it's applied to the particles that make up our body, which creates an object's weight. Gravity exerts an equal amount of force on any object, which is 9.8 meters per second. This is why a tennis ball and basketball held up at the same height will hit the ground at the same time. Any object that is affected by gravity also has a center of gravity. The hip is where the human body's center of gravity is. A center of gravity is the place where gravity pulls the most on an object. In kick, you need to stay in the air, so the objective is to defeat gravity. The way you do this is with thrust, the force which opposes gravity. This comes down to Newton's second law of physics. To every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So, the higher you want to jump, the more thrust you need to oppose or push against gravity. Remember, gravity is 9.8 meters per second for any object, so you need to produce more thrust to overcome this. You can work out how much thrust is generated with the equation Fc equals m. This equation means force is equal to mass, which is weight, times by acceleration, the speed, or the period, Force 5 is centripetal acceleration. Just to recap, circular motion is really velocity along the four corners of a square. But if circular movement is really movement around the four corners of a square, then what makes it round? The answer to this lies in a force called centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration pulls an object traveling in circular motion towards the middle of the circle, which is called the axis. We can see that as the lake swings around its velocity, or direction of travel, centripetal acceleration changes it so that the leg is pulled in slightly, bending around the corners and making the movement round. This change in direction usually increases the speed and power of the kick. To find out how much centripetal acceleration the man generates, use the equation AC equals V over R. This equation says angular acceleration equals velocity divided by the radius. Just so you know, the opposing force to centripetal acceleration is centrifugal acceleration, which is the force that tries to pull the leg away from the axis. This force is called torque. 
the force that creates rotation. If you look at this stage of a kick, the leg has to turn so that it can go into the first stage of circular movement. This requires the ability to rotate or twist exists when a lever arm is connected to an axis. The force applied against the lever causes rotation or twisting. Torque also has its own measurement. This is crucial, because if you don't generate enough torque, you can't turn. And if you can't turn, you can't perform any kind of kick. Torque affects any part of the body where joints are, and in this Taekwondo kick, the hip, upper and lower leg, and ball of the foot are main areas where you need to use it. Torque also has its own measurement and equation, which is T equals R times F, or torque equals radius times force applied. 